Welcome, folks, to Land Timber Stream. Hope you're having a good Thursday night, Friday Eve, as we call it here on the channel. Uh, we can kill this thing. What is it doing? Anyway, good to have everyone. Uh, we can fire this music, actually. And we're going to talk about some more multicast. Um, I am to the point where I'm getting into those features. I've covered most of the main features in multicast. Uh, we've got our VM fired up, by the way, in Azure uh, tonight. But I'm now getting to some of the more subtle feature section, which is a good in a way. Uh, it is the last day of January. I was hoping to have this section finished uh, in January, which is not happening, but for a good cause. Uh, I feel okay with it. I do need to keep a good pace, though. And as a matter of fact, today I did get some... Um, several labs done like before work and uh one or two during lunch i think um and that includes new material so i felt pretty good about that but let's take a look real quick at the agenda here um yeah command references so what i mean by that is uh let's open up the oh shoot uh, yeah have it the Cisco command reference page, you all know what I'm talking about. That is where there are, of course, you know, being familiar with the documents is very important for her prep and preparing for the lab because unlike the written, in the lab exam, you do have access to a number of documents, right? Of course, we've got the command references and there's a couple strategies here, right, that I've sort of figured out as I go along. As you can see, I've already dipped into a lot of these. Now, for multicast, there are, uh, I think there's just a single command reference, which is IP multicast. I don't think there's a protocol independent. Yeah. Unlike the configuration guides, Configuration Guides has two sections, which is uh, PIM and Multicast. Yeah, so it has IP Multicast, and then there's an IP Multicast PIM Configuration Guide, separate. Um, oh, this is updated. Interesting. So, but in the command references... You know, let's say, for example, that I get a lab uh, like this on uh, i &E. Stub multicast routing and IGMP helper. Okay, I have no idea what that feature... I mean, I have an idea, but I don't know how to configure it. So there's a couple ways I can go about it. I can look at... Hope in the configuration guide that there's an example and an explanation, right? Uh, if it's not in configuration guides, that's the first place I go. Then I will go to the uh, technology section, which we have to back up a little bit, right? We have to go uh, Cisco full menu. I don't even know if this link works anymore, but it does. So we go to networking technologies and we see if there is pertinent information here covered. There is an IP multicast section under technologies. I did look in here. I didn't look under digest though. RFCs and bidirectional PIM. Okay, that's good to know. Um, I did find white papers. Uh, it had an overview and it had um, multicast. This is interesting. Guidelines for enterprise IP multicast address allocation. That's tricky. Casadix, good evening. How are you, my friend? How is everything? in south america hope it's going well it is going well here it's supposed to warm up a little bit tomorrow finally so it's been in the for uh man it was so cold this morning this morning at our workout we had to carry a slam ball and they made us run outside this is 5 a.m in 40 degree weather um but i'm not going to complain other people are like 30 below zero here in the united states did you do previous config in the labs? There are very complex, could still a lot of time studying. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, uh, Cassadix. 
by by previous config. So we got IP multicast. So there's not really much here for us for this new feature. Uh, like lost time making the base configuration. Um, are you talking about my own labbing time? No, I haven't really lost much time to be honest. Because, oh, okay, so yeah, I've done like this week. I've I've picked up a good pace. I've gone through a number of labs. I don't know how many, but at least you know several a day, and I have spent very little time configuring my lab. To be honest, uh, what I've been doing is. Um, like this is in Azure, as a matter of fact, what I need to do here. I didn't even look to see what lab I was in. But yeah, I really have not spent much time. It's been good. This is initial multicast, which is fine. It's been going pretty quick. A lot of the labs are just four or five routers. And the same configuration, which... What I typically do at the end of the uh, end of the lab is I'll wipe the router configs and I'll restart the routers. And usually it's the same ones, which is okay. I have to reconfigure things. Like I have to go to each interface type IP pin multicast, which is fine. Um, or IP pin sparse mode, whatever the case may be. That's giving me practice in an area where you know, multicast, I have little to no experience in the real world. So the more I type those commands, I'm, I'm okay uh, with doing it as a routine. Where I want to get to be able to do is be able to draw a topology on a piece of paper, no computer nearby, and be able to actually write out the configurations flawlessly. That's how I want to be before I go into the lab. I want to be able to, someone to be able to say, boom. This is what I need, and I can do it in my head. I don't even need to hit tab or question mark, you know what I mean? Uh, I did look under here, I believe, design tech notes for multicast. These are some pretty um, esoteric topics here, or kind of old topics. Uh, config I have not looked here, configuration examples. Uh, let's see if there's stub. Yeah, stub is not here. Troubleshooting guides. Yeah, garbage. <laughs> Why that's even under multicast and like a generic. Anyway. So yeah, Cisco does very little to give you any useful information on these features. Uh, like time loss. Okay, yeah, I already read that. So what we have to do is we have to go to command reference. Now, I happen to have network lessons. And fortunately for me, um, most topics that are not covered by Cisco, Packet Pilot, how are you, man? I hope it's not too cold where you're at. It is finally going to warm up a little bit here. But yeah, so this, so for example, this is the lab in INE, stub multicast routing and IGMP helper. Guess what? Oh, two below packet pilot? Oh man. That's cold. But yeah, look here, we've got a lesson multicast stub routing and IGMP helper. So I've already looked over this prior to the stream. So we should be able to give this a shot on stream here um, and basically the lab is calling for us to let's uh, open our uh, VS code oh what is that to uh, vlog about yeah that's the main thing so let's say I didn't have network lessons before I st kick off the lab let me let me return back to this topic real quick uh, remember, one thing you can do is go to the command reference, right? So let's say 
Oh, where's that page? Let's say we go to the multicast reference, command reference. And I just go to the index. And this is what I've been doing the last few days. Like I've actually been not so much on this one as the PIM. But I resorted to where, you know what, if I really need to learn about these more not so often used features, I could swear that there was another. I thought there was a PIM, maybe not. Anyway. I thought, you know what? Uh, yeah. So I just started reading. Yeah, I got to that point where the lab workbook was asking me to do things. Like, I, I haven't even encountered that or read anything about that command. So I've just been going in here on some of these and just reading, you know, what is accept RP? And in particular, sometimes these are well written, sometimes they're worthless. But the usage guidelines and examples is sometimes what you got to do. I mean, yes, you can Google it, but who knows what kind of results you're going to get. And still, it's good to come in here and see what are all the IP PIM commands. You know, yes, there are quite a few of them. <laughs> a lot of them I've come across, but, you know, IP PIM redundancy. What is that? Um has to do with HSRP. So sometimes this is good to do, and I have done some of this uh, towards the end of this workbook section. Um, but for this particular lab, we do have a network lesson on it that I can refer to and I have referred to. So I think we're gonna go ahead and attempt it. And the requirements here, this is INE lab, by the way, folks, if you wanna buy the workbook, if you wanna see the, uh, the exercises yourself, there's a link below you can use to purchase a workbook. And uh, if you want to see all the answers, all the, you know, console outputs, all the explanations, I don't show that on the stream um, for obvious reasons, but yeah, check it out. This though is the basic requirement here. So between R6 and R10, Kind of the same topology we've been doing. And we want sparse. Uh, R4 is the BSR, is the RP using BSR. I like BSR, by the way. Uh, R8 is stub router with R10 emulating a host. And we want to R10 to use uh, 239.1.1.7 on V108. Okay, so essentially, uh, let me pull up the drawing. This music's kind of downbeat, isn't it? Yeah, that's a little better. Um, so with what I was reading about multicast stub routing is you might have a use case where let's say you have, let's do a little drawing here. So we're doing between R6 and R10, right? So let's suppose this is your uh, like headquarters. That's like a data center, right? And then suppose that this is a remote site. And you have a host here. A receiver. Okay, so you've got a receiver here. So what you don't want is 
you don't want to treat this as a you know local like a LAN multicast network. So there could be a lot of exchanges. Let's say there are um, numbers of groups out here of receivers and senders. And they're constantly sending periodic updates about, you know, especially in sparse mode, there might be star comma G's or, um, especially if you have, for example, the rendezvous point, which the rendezvous point in this case is router four. So if R4 is the RP and you're a um, pin router here with the receiver, that means you have to maintain the star comma G tree. And, you know, you don't want to necessarily, um, you're, you don't have any senders, right? You only have receivers. So you don't really need the, um, a lot of the other multicast traffic that is going on out here, right? So just in a lot of ways, it seems similar to like a stub network. You're tr you want to reduce your advertisements. You want to reduce your control plane traffic. And you don't need, uh, especially in dense mode, right? Where any new stream, like this is RP, this is uh, sparse mode. But especially in dense mode, where you would have traffic potentially streaming down here that you would have to then prune back over and over um so that might be a use case for you know but the nature of multicast is interesting because you know it's assuming um with a lot of these groups we've been using in the labs they are you know like domain local they are for an enterprise uh, anyway, let's configure, let's do our basic configuration here. Let's console and we're going to get a blocked first. That's okay. Made some fresh coffee for you, for you all tonight from Honduras. Uh, enjoy. A little caffeine to keep us going on Friday Eve. I do tend to get like get a little boost before Friday. Like I know tomorrow's Friday, so I'm usually I usually tired, but I have a little energy to to lab. You know, I'm like, yeah, we can lab tonight. Tomorrow I have the night off from streaming, so and it's Friday. Um, I do have to work Saturday. I don't, I've only I had to miss two days, two nights this week due to work, unfortunately. Um. And I will miss some lab time Saturday, but I do have some time off tomorrow. Who knows? I might stream tomorrow. Um, okay, we have router four, five, six. Actually, it goes. Let's put them in order, like six, four, five. And this is going to be a very straight line multicast network here. Not much to it. But let's configure our, our basics. IP, PIM, sparse mode. IP multicast routing. And who is our BSR? Uh, I love this BSR much better than... It's so much simpler than the way auto RP works, in my view. R4 is RP using BSR. Okay. RP and BSR. Even easier. Okay. So then we'll go to router four. The multicast routing interface J zero one one forty six IP PIM J zero one forty five interface L zero and IP PIM uh, RP candidate. All right, let's see, candidate. Uh, I 
I just did this earlier today, and this is new for me. Oh, it's not at the interface level. That's right. IP PIM. RP candidate L0. Yep. And IP PIM uh, BSR L0. Uh, we don't need any hash right now. We only have a single RP. So we're good there. We got our tunnels up. Good deal. Now over here, Jazero IP PIM sparse mode. Interface Jazero 158. IP multicast routing. Okay, should be good there. Interface Jazero 158 IP PIM sparse mode. Okay, this is where it gets a little interesting. So what we have to do here to make this a stub is um, router five has to act as a, I, it has to filter neighborships. So what's going to happen is, the, the way I understand it anyway, this is all new to me, but basically um, we use IGMP join here. And then uh, we do a filter. Multicast filter. Uh, yeah, PIM, multicast filter, and then what we... Do. So these do not become neighbors. They don't have an adjacency, so we're not going to get all of the updates, but Router 5 is going to let the rest of the, the network know that he is a receiver for... Uh, what just happened? Preview has been doing this lately, folks. I don't know why, but it's acting weird. Um, so what's going to happen is Router 5 is going to go into dense mode. And he's going to forward as it just... He's not going to try to be smart about it. He's just going to forward all multicast traffic. And he's also going to be an IGMP host. He's going to say whatever group we're trying to get down here, Router 5 is going to act like he's the receiver so that he is joining the group and just forwarding all multi blindly forwarding all multicast traffic down here um and what's going to happen is uh router eight is going to say he needs to know who his um rendezvous point is and he's going to learn that through uh bsr advertisements Come from router five. So that's how that works. So a lot of the magic is configured here on router five. So I need to actually back up to that. And let's see, interface jazz zero 158. Uh, we're gonna say IP PIM dense. And we're gonna say IP IGMP, oh, IP PIM um, neighbor filter. I have to use access list. That's right. Mm. I need to look at the example. I don't know exactly what's specified in the access list, but thanks to network lessons. I actually had that wrong. The filter goes here. I think. And this has multicast helper enabled. Is it IGMP or? Yeah. So it's, it's a little sneaky, right? It's a little squirrely, but it works. And you have to 
kind of cut things off here and pretend that we're a receiver, but not really. Um, so yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, so the neighbor filter goes here. Yeah. Pim neighbor. Okay, I think that's how it goes. All right, so... Yeah, IP PIM dense mode and then IP IGMP helper address. And the helper address is for... Yeah, the helper address command, the destination is him. So let's go back. We're gonna say IP IGMP helper. What are our commands here? Oh, we can do unidirectional link also. But in this case, it's going to be 151.58.8. Okay, so that is that. That may need to be sparse mode. That might need to be sparse mode here. Yeah, let's do that. I think that's what we need. All right, so now on router eight, uh, we do, yeah, sparse mode, and then we do IP PIM uh, neighbor filter. Oh, we need an access list. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to become a neighbor of router five. So access list, no R5. IP access list, uh, no R5. IP access list standard. I'm gonna say deny host 155.158.5. And then uh, permit any. Then on our interface, Jazz 0158, IP PIM, neighbor, filter, no R5. So these should not become neighbors. Ah, uh, source. I may have this backwards. Router three, I've been sparse. Ah, uh, okay, I do. It's the reverse. So this is here. That's here. Okay, that makes more sense, actually. I started to do that. Yeah, sender receiver. Okay, let's let's back that up. And where I get confused too is on the um, rendezvous point. Say router two, router three, router four. Sparse, yeah. Let's let's see how it goes here. So we need to do interface jazz zero one fifty eight router five I think does need to be PIM dense mode and no IP IGMP helper address.
Okay, so router three. That's the neighbor filter. No, it's sparse. It is sparse. So it's on the other. It's at the. No IP, IGMP, helper address. Help, helpler. Yeah, I've always used, uh, you know, IP helper address for DHCP, right? Here we're getting an actual IGMP helper. Okay, so we don't want to be neighbors with router 8. IP access list standard R8 uh, deny host 5158.8 permit any and then we're going to say interface j 158 no or IP PIM neighbor filter Okay, we don't need it over here. I guess we could leave it. It wouldn't really do any harm, but now why is this? Uh, okay, we're going to take that out. And I believe this is what goes in dense mode. Yes, it does. Okay, so it's just going to be a, you know. Also here, IPPIM dense mode. And here is where we put. Um, yeah, on this interface facing. Yeah, so this interface is facing the receiver and it is going to act as an IGMP helper. That's where we need it. IP, IGMP, helper. 51108.10. Okay. Let's look at our config, see if we're feeling good. Okay, that looks good. Okay, that looks good. Let's look over here. IP interface J zero one eight. Oh, show run J zero one fifty eight. Okay, we got our neighbor filter. Okay, I think that should do it. Um, and then we have to go over here and actually join the group, right? So let's let's see what happens. Let's see, it says that uh, R4 already is stub router with R10 emulated host 239117. So IP, IGMP, join group. Oh, we do have to enable multicast routing. Join group 239. All right, let's see what happens here. Um, show IP IGMP group. Um, interesting, all right. Yeah, it's not connected. Did I do the right interface? I did. Okay, that's fine. Dense, dense, uh, DR, no one. Show IP PIM neighbor. We should not have a neighbor. That's correct. Show IP PIM, oh, sh show IP M route. Nothing. Let's see. 
Make sure I enable that. Show IP multicast. Okay, yeah, it is enabled. Show IP PIM tunnel. Yeah, it's not really working, is it? Uh, show IP PIM neighbor. Oh, are the interfaces down? Dead government. It's probably the issue again. No shut, no shut here. There we go. We don't even <laughs> even have uh, IGP adjacency. It's okay. Easily remedied. Okay, so we should see show IP PIM BSR. None yet. Those interfaces are up. Uh, that takes a minute, I've noticed. Should be me, yes. Uh, show IP PIM RP mapping. Okay, good. All right, we got a tunnel interface. That's good. We should have it here as well. Tunnel is up. Hey, it did work. Check it out. We've got a tunnel. Show IP PIM tunnel. Router 4. Check it out. Show IP PIM RP mapping. Nice. So because 5 is just blindly forwarding all multicast uh, updates uh, to Router 8, Router 8 has been able to register with the RP, or he will be able to register. Um, show IP IGMP group. Yeah, there we go. Show IP IGMP group. Nice. Now, do I have to do a join? I don't think I do. Let me double check though. No, I don't. Okay, so the. Oh, did I use the right helper address? Show run. Is there a verification command for that? Show IP IGMP. IGMP querying router, check it out. I think that is where we see the helper. Oh, helper address. I have the wrong helper address. That's a problem. The helper address is going to be router 5. Um, pretty sure. Yeah, okay, I've got that wrong. Let me fix that. IP, IGMP, helper address. Oh, that's interface level, isn't it? Oh, that's right. Okay. Show, run. Oh, that's on one. Yep, I've got that part configured wrong. GI01108, no IPI GMP helper. Uh, 151108.10, yeah, that's not the direction that needs to be going. Needs to be here, interface GI01158, IPI GMP helper address. 158.5, okay. So now,
of that. Uh, now let's go up to router five. Show IP IGMP helper. Oh no, show IP member. Okay, he doesn't know about that yet. Um, so I think what's supposed to happen is this router is supposed to get this IGMP request, this join on this interface and he's supposed to forward it as basically an IGMP membership report straight up to router five and then router five knows, okay, uh, I need to join this group. I need to jo join the star comma G group. All the way up to router four. We should actually see an M route for it on router four if this is working correct, but I'm wondering Oh, okay. I got it wrong. So it needs to be on this interface with this IP. That's the problem. All right. We'll get it right one of these days. Uh, 58 no IP IGMP helper address. And I had it on the right interface, but I had the wrong IP. IP IGMP helper address. Which makes sense because this is where the IGMP request will come in. So now let's see show IP IGMP groups. Uh, this these timers aren't the best. Let me. Did I just configure this on router ten? No, it's on the right router, router eight. That's right. Okay, he has it here. Last reporter. He should be reporting it up here. There it is. Awesome. It works. Yes. Okay. So now what that means is we should now have a star comma G for 239117. Booyah. We do. Rendezvous point. SJC. Isle is 0145. Oil is 0158. Sweet. Now we should have it on router four as well. Voila, uh, aisle is uh, null. So that means router six will not have this route. Doesn't, perfect. So now we just need to send the traffic. Let's look, uh, what does this look like, look like on router eight? There it is, nice, okay. The oil is your one. Okay, so this should work. Ping two three nine one one seven. Yes, we got it to work. Awesome. We had some help from network lessons, but we got it to work. So to summarize, um, assuming this is sparse mode environment, if we want to create a stub routing segment. Whatever, I don't know what to call this role. Um, ABR, I don't know, or ASBR, I don't know. Like, well, this is kind of like a, um, I don't know, a hub or an edge router to the stub. This is a stub upstream router. There you go. Why don't we call it that? This is a stub upstream router. It has to, we do not want it to form a PIM adjacency here. What we want is we want IGMP packets, IGMP uh, membership reports to hit this router and to be forwarded, blindly forwarded to router five. We don't want to talk to router five about PIM. We don't want to, you know, uh, we do want to know who the RP is because, um, in order to receive the traffic, 
Well, this, this router is basically going to also report. Uh, I'm not sure why this router needs to know about the, well, I guess it needs its own multicast routing table to be correct. Who the RP is, uh, the groups. Yeah, he needs multicast routing. He needs an MRIB and an MFIB. But, um, yeah, as far as this relationship, we filter it out. And the helper command goes on the PIM router wherever IGMP uh, reports will be received. But the, the helper address is going to be the rendezvous point. Got it. Cool. Let's look at our um, lab answer key and see if we got it right. Yep, uh, R5 has a neighbor filter. Now it has sparse mode configured on the, it has sparse mode configured here, not dense mode. That's not how network lessons teaches it. They teach it a little differently. And obviously it works. Oh, it has dense mode on router eight. And it has, hmm, it's a little goofy uh, in my non-expert opinion of multicast. Uh, like this is working right now, right? And that's why, you know, that's a good thing about the actual lab because um, they're often going to check for the results. Like they would run a script to see, for example, when your lab is done, you turn it in. Can router six send, they try to send multicast traffic and see if it gets received on router 10. So some of these little discrepancies, like differences of how, like in Network Lessons Lab, it doesn't have PIM running here at all. Why would you need to run PIM here? You don't. Obviously you don't. It's just extra control plane uh, configuration that to me is a little sloppy, but um, anyway. I disagree with you, workbook answer, and I can prove it. <laughs> um, I've noticed that in the INE labs, like they tend to turn on IP PIM on all the interfaces. Like even if you're not, like even if you're acting as a host, which a host would never run PIM, right? Like actual PC would not be running PIM or receiver. Uh, anyway, IGMP filtering is the next lab. We're going to mark that last one off. And that felt pretty good. Okay, on this one... All right, this is going to be a little different. Oh, man. Uh, unfortunately, folks, it is getting a little late. Um... And I know it just started, but I, I'm actually doing well about labbing in general or studying about three hours a day during during the weekday. I've been doing that pretty consistently. It generally is after workout in the morning. Um, I usually get an hour and a half. And then at lunch, I'll get a, like a half hour and then an hour at night. So I've been doing that pretty consistently and I want to hope to keep doing it and I need to keep trudging through these labs because uh, Squidly finally caught a stream yes you did man how are things going um, I'm just about to end the stream unfortunately <laughs> um, yeah see my schedule uh, my typical day is I get up at 4 30 a.m and go to the gym uh come back and generally by 7 a.m the lab is fired up like uh showered gotten ready whatever uh recovered a little bit at least <laughs> and uh started the lab so in order to get up that early it means i have to go to go to bed pretty early right um but man today i got through
Did I start this one today? I'm not sure. I know I got through at least three labs today. But to be honest, folks... Ah. All right, so let's map things out, right? My, my goal was to hit the end of this by January. And I don't want to prematurely rush anything. But the clock is ticking. Like, um... I w I've got a lot of labs left to do, and I want to be able to attempt a lab by December, if not before, if possible. Because um, that that written clock is is running too. Like, uh, Squidly, no worries. My schedule is changing soon, so I should be able to catch more. Cool. Hope your studying is going well. Hoping to ramp up mine soon. Yeah, it's it's going well. I have to say, it is going well. Um, I'm feeling so much better about multicast than when I started because I took time. That's why it's taken me a while. I took time. I've taken time to really try to understand exactly what is happening um, with building these trees and troubleshooting them. And I feel really good about that. Now, the one area down here that is going to be tricky, I know, is Anycast and MSDP. Um, I had a little bit of trouble with that during preparing for the written, so I have to say, if I can finish this, depending on how things go, um, man, I would love to get to the end of this by the end of this weekend. We'll see. It probably won't happen. Slow and steady wins the race. That's right. I mean, you can't prematurely rush things, um... I have to say, so when I when I started this, it took me a long time to get to like to Pima Cert. These four, I had to go back and do a lot. I do a lot of packet captures. I had to do, um, but once I got like this process through these four, I started hitting these pretty quick. And then when I got to Auto RP. It took me a minute as well. I had to, there's like two or three points where I had to just sort of slow down. So I slowed down and I, I figured it out, usually via packet captures and network lessons. I'm like, okay, ah, okay, got it. This is what's happening. Verified it. Once I got into here, man, it started going pretty quick again. And I've probably done, So, I mean, I've probably done all these labs in the last, you know, three days or so. So, that's good. I'm going to hit a slowdown here, I think. So, um, but knowing, I know myself, like I can go deep sometimes. And I have to constantly catch myself and say, hey, psh, slow down. Keep a regular pace. This is this is a, you know, sprint, not a, not a lifelong marathon, right? Um Got to work towards being ready for the real lab. I'm really looking forward to IPv6, folks. I've fallen in love with IPv6. Um, I struggled with it preparing for the written. I said, you know what? I'm going to start trying to use IPv6 on my home network as much as I can. I'm going to try to use it in Azure. And since then, I've just really enjoyed uh, playing with IPv6. So I'm looking forward to this. including the multicast section, which is cool. Um, and I am hoping to knock this out in February. QoS, we need a whole month, almost guarantee you. It's not that many labs here. There are not that many labs here, but let's just say February drags a little bit. That leaves me, I want to be done with QoS in March. I'd like to tackle security in April, system management in May, uh, IP services in June. That will lead up, well, this will be Cisco Live, so this will be June, July. Then I'd like to hit these uh, foundation and these big labs, full scale mock labs. Uh, that'll be like two, two months, so August, September, yeah. Probably, probably what we're looking at there. So anyway, uh, yeah, hope to get through some of these pretty quickly. And uh, 
Oh, we got some switching in here. IGMP snooping. That's good. I'm really looking forward to any cast RP as well. Oh, we have some IGMP filtering. That's the next lab. And then IGMP timers. Multicast helper map. Interesting. Bidirectional PIM, SSM, multicast BGP extension. I'm looking forward to that. I've heard a lot about it. Don't know exactly how it works. Uh, so, yeah. Good stuff. I'm learning learning new things and enjoying what I'm learning. So, uh, let's shut down. Let's wipe all nodes. Uh, and then stop all nodes. Uh, sign out. And then we're going to shut down our VM in Azure. Revert that. What else did I talk about? Oh, meat chunks. So this is what I was, you know, talking about. Just having to go through command reference one by one sometimes. Yeah, that's what I've been, I've been doing some of that. And it's been very helpful. Uh, all right, let's shut down our VM. I've been playing, I played a little bit with, uh, oh, did I not set my, oh, it's not the large. Uh, I wanted to automate this even more. As a matter of fact, folks, today I was looking at, you know, it's a little process I do when I fire up the stream. And it's like, these small little interrelated steps and some of them is like updating the stream title on Twitch. Uh, when I do the YouTube upload, I want to automate some of these, <clears throat> excuse me, administrative tasks that involve streaming. They don't take a lot of time. They're just tedious. So I was reading about the Twitch uh, API and it looks very doable, even my very limited knowledge. Um, and of course, there's a YouTube AT API as well. Yeah, so this this is pretty pretty slick. Um, the new Twitch API. So I want to, you know, I didn't want to get, <laughs> I don't want to spend a lot of time on this stuff, but. They have sample code. And it would be really cool to take advantage of some of these sort of tasks. You know, that I can that I can do and automate a little bit. <clears throat> also, I was looking at uh, Azure automation. So like some of these, I would love to have it whenever I log in to my account. Well, maybe not. Whenever I log in, maybe I send a command to Azure and this will trigger an event in Azure to launch the VM or something like that. You know what I mean? So, uh, and YouTube, of course, has an API. I could do my uploads. Um, it only takes me a second to do it, uh, you know, a minute to do it manually, but I want to improve my sort of DevOps automation chops. Anyway, that'll be for another day. That's the kind of thing I want to work on at post CCI, to be honest. I really want to get into that kind of stuff. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight, folks. Hope you all have a great uh, Thursday Eve um, here on the channel, of course, and Twitch. If you're an Amazon Prime member, um, you have a free uh, Twitch Prime account you can use and renew once a month. Feel free to follow us here on, uh, or subscribe here on Twitch as well as YouTube. You can follow me on Instagram and I'm playing more with Instagram stories, like screenshots and stuff I'm working on. Uh, it's had some good response. So follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, and of course, Discord is a place to be for collaborating with uh, other people, other students and people working on certs. Thanks so much for stopping by tonight, folks. Always enjoy uh, seeing folks in the chat and being able to interact and sending you good bits. 
we shall see you. I'm off tomorrow, but we'll see you sometime here Saturday on Land Tamer Stream. Have a great weekend.